Hey, did you guys know Apple have just revolutionized the audiovisual content medium that we call video? Reinventing it entirely for the modern world. And they're doing the same thing to the humble photograph too. So revolutionary is this process that even the giants of the camera and imaging industry, like Canon on the consumer market and creative production industry favorite Blackmagic, have all had to reinvent a whole new kind of lens just to make it work. It's astounding. And if any of you actually believe any of what I just said was tied to the fact of Apple actually inventing something and are hungrily looking forward to buying into this new landscape of creation uh, can i have some money please no, no genuinely can i have some money you seem to have more dollars than cents as the old parlance goes and i figured you might want to share it around a little bit and i am in need really just I just okay all snark aside to be fair i get why you might be excited about this because i am too and if this thing catches on it will be great very interesting lots of creative possibilities wonderful times for all and i do hope it catches on because what apple are pushing is a lot more interesting frankly in potential than 180 video or 360 video Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> no rehearsals, we're pushing on. Hello again, I am Blunty. So, Apple have just had one of their things where they go on about how stunningly amazing their products can make your life and your lifestyle. And look, I've got some Apple stuff. I like my Apple stuff, but man, do I detest the preening, smug wankery that goes on in their marketing. It's gotten so much worse over the last decade. But that is just marketing. I, I get it. They're selling branded luxury lifestyle sheen. Fine. And Apple have been criticized by the Apple hater crowd for a very long time now for their predilection towards marketing things they didn't invent as if they invented them. And I get why that sticks in some people's craw because it is pretentiousness, isn't it? So... About a year ago, we were introduced to Apple's headset. It does virtual reality and mixed reality and augmented reality, but don't you dare actually call it a VR headset because it's a spatial computing device. Apple hate it when you call it a VR headset because they, they got to pretend they invented the new thing that didn't exist before. This the new thing. They, 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 they didn't even invent the term spatial computing, by the way. That's literally a two-decade-old concept that someone else came up with, unrelated to Apple entirely. But whatever, along with this, Apple introduced their concept of spatial video. Also not a thing they invented, it's just 3D video with a new wrapper around it. Uh, and we've had moving images in 3D, of course, for almost as long as the concept of a movie camera has existed itself. Again, don't get me wrong, that new wrapper, the new file structure we're talking about here, and formatting, is a lot better than how we have been doing 3D video so far. Oh, and by the way, just in case you're confused, that, that, that new wrapper, that new file format is not something Apple invented either. <laughs> the multi-view extension of HEVC, MVHEVC, which you might know better as H265, was defined within the standard of HEVC many years ago now. It just wasn't really being used in any high-profile spaces. But now Apple are doing it? Well, everyone's going to start using it, aren't they? Because for all the criticism you can throw on Apple, they do tend to lead the way on things, don't they? they whether or not they invented it they tend to invent a good way to present it a way that people care about to that end the newest iphones could make said spatial video and a point and shoot very friendly consumer easy way that even you know grand could figure out but it has rather failed to catch on so far though because well the misunderstanding is you need one of apple's shockingly expensive uh vr headsets to to use it you don't this is a standard file format, the Quest I'm wearing right now. You can watch spatial video on this thing just fine. Again, it's just a part of the standard video format we've all been using for many, many, many years now. Now, while all of this was going on, I kept remembering my prediction of a little over a year ago, how Apple's influence and monstrous cash bags and relationship with giants like Disney would push the industry toward a broader and easier accessibility to 3D movies and TV at all levels on you know, regular streaming services. That hasn't quite come to fruition yet, but I still think it's on the way. And not just Hollywood blockbuster movies either, but the whole spectrum of content. And the next step towards that is happening right now. With Apple's announcement yesterday, all about their clever stuff and the new version of the OS and Vision Pro and global releases of said device, and oh, which, by the way, would you look at the Aussie prices of the Apple VR headset? Whoo! Again, could, could you help me out a little bit with, with some cash? Not, not for this. 
I can't justify this. I, I need to pay bills, man. But Canon announced a new lens along with all this called the RF-S 7.8mm f4 SDM dual lens. And for those who can't decode Canon lenses, naming structure. It does make sense, I promise you. It just seems like a random batch of acronyms and numbers if you're not in the know. But what all this means is it is a lens for their cropped frame mirrorless camera, the EOS R7. It is a very wide angle of view, a little wider than the fisheye lens on most recent iPhones and roughly emulates the most important part of the average human field of view. It's a moderately fast lens, so should do well in challenging lighting conditions alongside what the camera itself is capable of doing at high ISOs in, in low light and stuff. And the STM bit means it has a stepper motor for the focus system, which means this thing is designed as a cheaper lens because the good lenses, their high-end lenses, have ultrasonic motors in them, not stepper motors. And ultrasonic motors are far faster and more precise focus, which is why they're all on their pro lenses. And of course, the dual part means it's a side-by-side -side arrangement of two lenses, both converging on a single image sensor. If you're a little bit slow on the uptake, that is one lens for each eye. Now, for this exact same camera system, Canon have already made a dual lens, been around for a few years now. But that lens, the RF-S 3.9mm f3.5 STM dual fisheye, is designed to make 180 degree field of view immersive stereo VR video. And it does this quite well. I've viewed a lot of content filmed with this exact camera setup, and I've been quietly lusting after the R7 and this lens so I can fool around with some high quality VR video for some time now. But that's all it would be for me, fooling around a bit. And I'll get to why in a second. Because first we have to draw the difference between that lens and the new lens. The new lens does not capture that wraparound field of view. Instead, it's what Apple calls spatial video and what the rest of us call 3D video. And that makes it far more interesting because while a 180 or even 360, I'm not going to spin around again, video <laughs> is great for content. I'll go on then. I'll do it. It's great. <laughs> I knew I'd regret that. It's great for content that makes you feel immersed, like travel videos are great in 180 uh, 3D video, or, or adventure stuff, you know, going across a mountain and hang gliding, spectating sports when you feel like you're sitting in the front row seat in box seats or whatever they call it at the sports ball places. Arenas? <laughs> Is it still funny when nerds pretend they don't know anything at all about sports? I don't know. It feels like the joke's getting stale. Uh, but watching performances, like dancing, again, from a, from a, from a front row sort of perspective, watching uh, dancing or, or live music or more abstract artistic creations or just jugglers and things like that, or people doing tricks on skateboards and... You know, it's great for that because you get a sense of the scale of things and the speed of things and the depth of things. It's really nice. All of these things where a wraparound immersion is very, very desirable. But making more heavily produced content like documentaries or fictional TV shows or indeed movies, well, doing that in 180 VR video is a large limitation. There is so much you've got to take care of and try and light without getting the stuff in the frame and all your production crew and stuff like that. And where is the action taking place and how do you direct the viewer's attention to where you need it to be to tell the story you want to tell and all that kind of... It's, it's not easy to do that in 180 and really sell it as a narrative experience. But a spatial video approach, where it's more like you're peering through a large window into another fully realized depth correct 3D world, well, that opens up a lot more creative avenues. So, well, people all the way from very humble YouTubers like me, all the way up to the much bigger names in content creation can start playing with this Canon lens and experimenting to see, you know, how their style suits this spatial video kind of production. For those higher up on the content production ladder, Blackmagic, a big name in camera gear, and the people behind DaVinci Resolve, my personally favorite editing software, well, they are releasing their own new thing, the Blackmagic Ursa Cine Immersive. It is being marketed, at least for now, as designed to capture content for the Apple Vision Pro, because until now, nearly no other VR-capable camera system, no matter how fancy you got, was sufficient to create content that could, at least theoretically, use the entire resolution of the Apple Vision Pro, because it does have a very high resolution uh, set of displays in there. Whether or not you can tell the difference between true native resolution stuff at 8K and 6K when you get to that point is, is that's a whole other discussion, but you know. On the paper numbers, this is the first one that can really properly do it justice. With 8,160 by 7,200 resolution per eye, 16 stops of dynamic range, which is woo, and up to 90 frames per second stereoscopic 3D immersive video. It is ideal 
deal for creating very high quality content in 180 stereoscopic 3D video. But yeah, it is the spatial video style. That's a lot more useful to me. The idea of presenting at least some of the kinds of content I make in a 3D depth correct way is enticing. It is remarkable how the simple sense of scale, of distance, of depth can enhance your intuitive understanding as a viewer of the things going on in the frame or just help you pull a little further into the event and help you feel a little more part of it. Now, whether or not I can actually get my hands on this stuff is another story. It's been quite some time since I've done too much in the camera hardware side of the industry as far as my content goes. Those of you who've been around here for long enough, I used to focus on that very heavily for a little while because the camera industry was very exciting for a little while. And then the camera industry got really, 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 really boring for a long while. So I started doing other stuff. But if this sort of catches wind, I might slide a little bit back towards more of it because I guarantee you Canon will not be the one and only people out there doing this. I mean, they aren't already, but, you know, in a higher profile way. There is as yet no pricing or availability uh, details of the new lens, so for now we wait. And, uh, yeah, as far as my own content goes, if anyone has an in with Canon, you, you point them my way or point me their way or whatever. Because <laughs> I'm really curious to have a play with this thing. Thanks for watching. I am Barty. I'll catch you next time, uh, as always. I invite you to let me know what, uh, what you think in the down below. And uh, thank you, as always, to the patrons scrolling up above there.